فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We are in our series in which we are speaking about the root causes that deviate an individual from the straight path and what brings about deviation. So we previously mentioned some root causes. And inshallah ta'ala today we're going to carry on with other root causes that bring about deviation. The first one for today's uh, lecture is حب الجاه والرئاسة Loving, leadership and authority. This is from the root causes that bring about deviation. As you're all aware of, my beloved brothers and sisters, our soul, without a shadow of a doubt, it has desires for things that are not good. It loves. And it has wants of evil. As Allah said to us in the Quran, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءُ That the person, the nafs, is one that calls you to evil. Such as loving the dunya, loving to be high, طَلَبُ الْعُلُوْ To be something, somebody who's high and you know, we like it. وَمُنَافَسَةُ الْخَلْقِ We like to compete with the people in worldly matters. We love leadership. إِلَىٰ غَيْرِ ذَلِكَ مِمَّا يُذَمُّ شَرْعًا That which is in the Sharia, that it's rebuked. You find that the nafs is, it likes it. And from the things that the nafs likes, as you know, is hubbul jahi wal riasa, loving leadership, being in charge. <coughs> if you look at those people who oppose the truth and go against the truth, they oppose the truth, knowing that they are opposing the truth. Aware that they are opposing the truth, but when you get to the bottom of the re- bottom of their reason of why they are opposing the truth, it is talab al dunya, is to gain worldly or is to attain worldly gain, and they strengthen and argue for their opinions knowingly that they are wrong. ولذلك أبو الوفاء علي بن عقيل الحنبلي رحمه الله he says, المحبة للرئاسة والميل إلى الدنيا والمفاخرة والمباهات بها والتشاغل بها. He says, loving leadership, inclination to the dunya, boasting and bragging about the dunya, busying yourself, والتشاغل بما فيه اللذة وما يدعو إلى الشهرة, and busying yourself in the sweetness that it calls you to. And the fame that it brings about. دون ما توجبه الحجة ويقضي به العقل والمعرفة. And not giving precedence to the proofs and where rationality lies. من الأسباب is from the reasons that divert a person from the truth and throw them into harm. فَعَلَىٰ نَحْوِ هَذَا مِنَ الْأَسْبَابِ تَكُونُ الْآفَةُ الصَّارِفَةُ وَالْمُوجِبَةُ مِنْهُ Something similar to that, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said it. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, وَطَلَبُ الرِّئَاسَةِ Looking for leadership. وَلَوْ بِالْبَاطِلِ Even if it has to be in a false manner, looking for leadership, even if it's bad and it's evil and it is false, تُرْضِيهِ الْكَلِمَةِ 
التي فيها تعظيمه وإن كانت باطلة وتغضي وتغضبه الكلمة التي فيها ذمه وإن كانت حقا he says وطالب الرئاسة the person who is seeking leadership ولو بالباطل even if it's through falsehood it pleases him the statements that are in him praise so the one who is seeking leadership even if it's through a bad way what pleases him is that when you say to him statements that glorifies him, that honors him and you're showing him respect. وَإِنْ كَانَتْ بَاطِلًا Even if what you're saying about him is false. وَتُغْضِبُهُ It angers him, the statement which is said about him that isn't good. Even if it's the truth about him. And then he goes on to say, وَالْمُؤْمِنُ تُرْضِيهِ كَلِمَةُ الْحَقِّ لَهُ وَعَلَيْهِ but the believer, what pleases him is the statement which is true even if it's against him or for him. وَتُغْضِبُهُ And it angers him. كَلِمَةُ الْبَاطِلِ The false statements that are said لَهُ وَعَلَيْهِ On him or against anyone else. لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى يُحِبُّ الْحَقَّ Because Allah loves the truth. وَالصِّدْقَ وَالْعَدْلَ Allah loves truthfulness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves justice. وَيُبِغُذُ الْكَذِبَ وَالظُّلْمَ And Allah dislikes and he hates lying and oppression. So look at those people who are running after recognition and leadership. When it's said about them statements which they dislike, even if it's the truth, they get angry. And if it's said about them statements which is praiseworthy, even if it is batil and they don't even have those characteristics and those attributes, they get happy. This goes against the way that the believer is. Al Imam al Shawkani, Rahimahullah. Al Imam al Shawkani, Rahimahullah. He says, وَقَدْ يَتْرُكُ التَّكَلُّمُ بِالْحَقِّ مُحَافَظَةً عَلَى عَلَى حَظٍ قَدْ ذَفِرَ بِهِ وَقَدْ يَتْرُكُ التَّكَلُّمَ بِالْحَقِّ Some people, they may leave off speaking the truth. مُحَافَظَةً they are trying to protect ala حَظٍ قَدْ ظَفِرَ بِهِ Because of a position and a rank in which he has gained. He has a status in the community. He's respected amongst the people. So he stopped speaking about the truth, trying to protect that reputation of his. قَدْ ظَفِرَ بِهِ مِنْ تِلْكَ الدَّوْلَةِ From the government, مثلا. Maybe worldly issues as well, wealth related matters. People fund him, Methalan. Wajahid and people who. Or he's in a position, he's, a, he's, a, he's an authority. So he won't speak the truth. And he won't say the truth. Rather, he may let me, he may even leave off the truth and speaking the truth the truth that is in opposition to what the people are doing he may stop speaking about that he may stop talking about the truth this truth is in opposition to what the people are doing he leaves it why does he leave it he wants to get the people's hearts and he's trying to protect, uh, sorry, and he fears that the people are going to run away from him. He may even leave off speaking the truth or he may even leave off speaking the truth because he believes or he thinks uh, and he desires and he hopes to gain something from the government or something from somewhere. Oh, min sa'ir nasi, or he may gain it from the people. Fi mustaqbali zamani in the future, that he's going to get something from the people. So this is something powerful that Imam Shaukani, rahimahullah, said. Basically, why is this person not speaking the truth, or why is the truth something in which he doesn't want to present himself to? Why doesn't he want to take it? What's deviating him from the truth? 
is hubb al riyasati wal jah leadership and be in charge he knows what he's upon is wrong I mean, he mathal and knows what the people are upon is wrong but he won't leave it because of leadership and his position and he may even do it because he wants to gain the people and he wants to get their hearts and he just wants to have the largest amount of gathering that's it and he may even sometimes say there's no masalih in it the maslaha he's talking about is not maslaha shar'iyah he's not looking at the maslaha of the sharia he's looking at maslaha shakhsiyah and there are two different things he's looking at a personal benefit not a religious benefit and this without a shadow of a doubt, is common and it is present within our midst. May Allah wa ta'ala protect us from this. Well, the scholars have actually proven this in their dealings with people of misguidance and people of falsehood. And they also witness from them when having dialogue and discussions with them that they actually admitted that what this person is upon is the truth. But the reason why he doesn't want to do it is what? Worldly reasons. And there are many people I sat personally with, and I had discussions with, even conversed with over the phone. And I told them, this matter, you know it's wrong, and you're in the middle of it. Why don't you leave it? Yeah, akhi, the people are not ready for it. Istijlaba li khawatir al-awam. Ya akhi, I, uh, this person you're talking to me about, and I'm aak, I am with you that he's wrong. And he's misguided. I'm with you on that. But I don't see maslaha in speaking against them or speaking against the mistake. The maslaha here again is what? Maslaha shakhsiyah. Even some of them have said, the only reason why I'm doing this is because if I speak against this particular person when the government, the British government tried to hunt me down, I don't have any people to help me. When I said to I heard this with my ears. So this statement of Al-Imam al-Shawkani, rahimahullah, is clear. وَقَدْ يَتْرُكُ التَّكَلُّمُ بِالْحَقِّ الَّذِي هُوَ خِلَافُ مَا عَلَيْهِ النَّاسِ اِسْتِجْلَابَ لِخَوَاطِرِ الْعَوَامِ وَمَخَافَةً مِنْ نُفُورِهِمْ He believes he's got good followers, good amount of people who are listening to him. He's highly respected. If he goes around the world, he's got security guard that looks after him. When he lands, you know, red carpet. So he believes if he speaks about matters of a sunnah and a tawheed that the amount of people who are listening to him مثلا, are Diobandis or مثلا, they are Brailvis that are listening to him. So he believes if he starts doing that that he's going, to, he's going to lose a high amount of crowd of people. So he won't speak about the issue. He doesn't want to lose those people. So he's only going to talk about universally agreed upon matters. Akhlaq. At-tabassub ala wachi akhik. Smile in the face of your brother. Give, you know, things on your right hand. What do you call it? Uh, when you see your brother on the path, on the road, give him salams. That's it. Well, and, and that doesn't mean I'm belittling those things. Naam, it has to be mentioned. But that's all his da'wah is. Even if it gets to get the crowd large to do comedy and make it that form of da'wah and nasheeds, Naam, by all means necessary. This brings the crowd in, it brings the people in. By all means necessary, it has to be done. We need to get istijlaba li khawatir al awam. We need to get the general mass. We need them to listen and make them attentive to our message. Ah. So misguidance is done, no problem. All of that, what is he trying to gain from the people? As the Shaykh Rahimullah says, أو من سائر الناس في مستقبل الزمان. He has طمع يظنه ويرجو حصوله. He has desires in his heart. He believes that there's going to come something from the people. They might invite him when he comes to the city and say, "Come eat with us." That's what he's going to gain. Or people are going to put money in his pocket. Or big organizations are going to call him. He's going to be driving a nice car. He's going to live in a nice hotel. All these things are going to happen. People are just going to come up to him and say, "I love you." The reason why they love him is because. He tells them what they want to hear. So this statement of Al-Imam al-Shawkaniyu has taken place in our waqa' today. Lidalika, the one who tells the people the truth has become gharib, strange. Has become strange. 
This now brings me to a powerful statement that I read from the Kitab, Hidayatul Hayara Fil Adribati Yahud wa Nasara, written by Al Allama um, Ibn Al Qayyim Al Jawziyah. This is now a manifestation, an example of the statement of Shokani. Shokani said it, but Ibn Al Qayyim he encountered it firsthand. Look what he said. He said, "Walaqad nadartu." I debated. He's talking about himself. Who's this? Ibn Al Qayyim. He said, وَلَقَدْ نَاظَرْتُ I debated بَعْضَ عُلَمَاءِ النَّصَارَى Some of the Christians, scholars of the Christians. فَلَمَّا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْحَقِّ بَهَدْ The truth became clear to the scholar from the Nasara. After a long discussion of the whole day, مُعْضَمُ يَوْمٍ Nearly the whole day we were going back and forth with each other. فَلَمَّا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْحَقِّ The truth became clear to him and he got silenced. فَقُلْتُ لَهُ I then said to him وَأَنَا وَهُوَ خَالِيَيْنِ We were both by ourselves. When everybody else left and by ourselves, I said to him مَا يَمْنَعُكَ الْآنَ مِنِ اتِّبَاعِ الْحَقِّ What is stopping you now from accepting the truth, from, from following the truth, from adhering to the truth? What is stopping you? فَقَالَ لِي He responded by saying to, he responded to me by saying إِذَا قَدِمْتُ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ الْحَمِيرِ هكذا لفظه فَرَشُوا لَنَا الشَّقَاقِ تَحْدَ, حوا... تحت حَوَافِرِ دَابَتِي وَحَكَمُونِي فِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ وَنِسَائِهِمْ وَلَمْ يَعْصُونِي فِي مَا آمُرُهُمْ بِهِ وَأَنَا لَا أَعْرِفُ صَنْعَةً وَلَا أَحْفَظُ قُرْآنًا وَلَا نَحْوًا وَلَا فِقْحًا فَلَوْ أَسْلَمْتُ لِدِرْتُ فِي الْأَسْوَاقِ أَتَكَفَّفُ النَّاسِ فَمَنَ الَّذِي يَطِيبُ نَفْسًا بِهَذَا He said to him, if I go after taking Islam, back to these donkeys, and he's referring donkey to his own people, the Nasara that he's from. Ibn al-Qayyim, look what he said, هَكَذَا لَفْضُ Like that he said it to me. Ibn al-Qayyim said, that's exactly his wordings. He's referring to the, the Christian scholars that he's from, he's referring to them as what? Hamir, donkeys. If I go back to them, they will place for me to live under my riding beast. They will take me out of my house. وَحَكَمُونِي فِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ وَنِسَائِهِمْ And they will control me in their wealth and their women. You see? And they won't. Are you with me? So he's trying to say that if I go back to them, they will treat me nice. They will give me a nice place to sleep. They will give me a nice way. And they will control me. They, they will what? They will give me money from their own. They will give me their women. This is what they will do for me if I go back to them. But if I choose not to go back to them, they will place me a, they will make me sleep outside. They will also control my life, not give me any money, not f help me with, with their women or anything. Are you with me? And they will disobey everything which I have to say to them. Are you with me, brothers? Brothers, are you with me? He is powerful. The only reason, he's not saying what you're saying is wrong. Then he goes on to say, I am not a person who, is, who knows any, uh, I have no, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have no expertise. I'm, I haven't specialized in anything. I'm not a craft man, I can't do anything. I have, I have not memorized Quran, meaning his works. I haven't memorized my scriptures. وَلَا نَحْوَنَا I don't know grammar as well. وَلَا فِقْحًا I don't know fiqh. Are you with me? In other words, your Qur'an, I don't also know it. I, don't, I haven't memorized the Qur'an. I haven't studied fiqh. I don't know grammar. فَلَوْ أَسْلَمْتُ If I today took Islam and I accepted it from you, لَدِرْتُ فِي الْأَسْوَاقِ I would walk around the market أَتَكَفَّفُ النَّاسِ Requesting and begging from the people. فَمَنِ الَّذِي يَطِيبُ نَفْسًا بِهَذَا who is going to give himself to that? Who wants to be like that? Then Ibn Al-Qayyim said to him, هَذَا لَا يَكُونُ That's not going to take the place. That's not going to happen. وَكَيْفَ تَظُنُّ بِاللَّهِ أَنَّكَ آثَرْتَ رِضَاهُ عَلَى هَوَاكَ يُخْزِيكَ وَيُذِلَّكَ وَيُحْوِجَكَ That's not going to be. How are you going to think of Allah when you left falsehood for Him and you turned away from your desires? That he's going to humiliate you then? That he's going to belittle you then? You've now chosen what was right from what was wrong. 
Why would you think bad of Allah? It's now that Allah wa will be there for you. And then he said, وَلَوْ فَرَضْنَا أَنَّ ذَلِكْ أَصَابَكْ But if I say hypothetically that that does happen to you, that you become broke and you lose your worldly gain, فَمَا ظَفِرْتَ بِهِ مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَالنَّجَاةِ مِنَ النَّارِ وَمِنْ سَخَطِ اللَّهِ وَغَضَبِهِ فِي أَتَمُّ الْعِوَضِ عَمَّا فَاتَكْ What you have gained in terms of the truth and the success that you have gained from not entering the hellfire and, and not, Allah not being angry with you is greater in exchange than what you've lost. Then he scratched his head and he said, Hatta ya'dan Allah. If Allah wills, Allah will guide me. Ibn al Qayyim, he said, Al Qadr la yuhtajju bihi. The Qadr is not a proof. You can't use it as a proof. Walau kan al Qadr hujjatan, if the Qadr was a proof, la kan hujjatan lil Yahudi, it would have been a proof for the, for the Jews. Ala takdeeb al Masih in disbelieving in Isa ibn Maryam. But you don't accept that. وَحُجَّةً لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ And it would have been a proof for the pagans على تكذيب الرسول in disbelieving in the messengers. وَلَا سِيَّمَا Not to mention أَنْتُمْ تُكَذِّبُونَ بِالْقَدَرِ You Christians don't believe in Qadr. فَكَيْفَ تَحْتَجُّ بِهِ Why would you use it in this circumstance? Then he said دَعْنَا الْآنَ مِنْ هَذَا Forget this, don't talk to us about this. وَأَمْسَكَ And he withheld from accepting the truth. Now what stopped this individual from taking the truth? What stopped him from surrendering to the truth. It is nothing except He just wanted leadership and be in charge. He just didn't want to go back to who his people and not be treated the way he's treated. And that is the reality of many people. They'll say to you, I have, Wallahi, I heard this from so many people. He goes, am I going to leave the misguidance? He calls it misguidance. But I'm in, but I'm a leader in it. For the haq, which I am a follower? No. If I take the truth from you, then I'm just going to be a follower. But in my, in where I'm in, and it, subhanAllah goes against this goal of the Salaf, which is, it is better that you're a follower in the haq than a leader in misguidance. خَيْرٌ أَن تَكُونَ إِمَامْ خَيْرٌ لَكَ أَن تَكُونَ تَابِعًا لِلْخَيْرِ it is better for you to be a follower in the truth than what? Imamun, a leader fi al bidai ama fi al haram. So that's the first root cause for misguidance and deviation. Now we're going to, inshallah ta'ala, move on to swiftly the second root cause that brings about for today's sit. And today's session, the second root cause of uh, deviation. The next one, inshallah ta'ala, is al-hasad. Al-hasad. Um, al-hasad, my beloved brothers and sisters, is also one of the root causes that bring about deviation. And it is the thing that made and brought to the um, Yahud in disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَجَحْدِ نُبُوَّةِ نَبِيِّنَا And also to be in stubborn denial of the prophecy of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Jews were aware of the Prophet and they knew him alayhi salatu wasalam. And they used to even go to the Arabs and they would say to them that Muhammad, there is going to come a Prophet and when he comes, we will be following him. And when we follow him, you all will be weak and we will be on top of you. But then when the Messenger والسلام, came, Allah tells us in the Quran, They knew him the way they like they know their own children. The Prophet they knew him like that. Because the signs and everything was there. But what is it that stopped them from it? Allah mentions to us in the Quran, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, He says, Hasadan min indi anfusihim. Hasadan min indi anfusihim. Hasad, envy and jealousy in their heart is what stopped them. From what? From wanting to come and enter into Islam. It's what stopped them. And it prevented them 
from taking the religion of Al-Islam. <clears throat> the Prophet ﷺ was not from their people. He was from the Arabs. They were wanting him to come out from them. But when they realized that he wasn't from them, this is what they did was they showed jealousy and enmity towards him alayhi salatu wasalam. So my beloved brothers and sisters, it's obligatory on each and every one of us. And yahtariza min al-hasan, stay away from jealousy and envy. Ghaya al ihtiraz as much as you can, run away from it. وَيَتَّقِيهِ غَاية الوقاية. Shield yourself from it as much as you can. Al-Allama Abdul Rahman Yahya Al-Mu'allimi in his book at tankil the second volume, page 195. The kitab is called at tankil the second volume, page 195. So, Abdul Rahman al in his kitab, he's refuting a man by the name of Muhammad Zahid al Kothari. Muhammad Zahid al Kothari. And Al Alama Abdul Rahman al Muallimi was explaining Haqiqatu Ta'thir al Hasad, the effects and the reality of what Hasad is. So, he said, Al Hasadu. Pay attention. Pay attention. He said that. Hasid is إِذَا كَانَ غَيْرُهُ هُوَ الَّذِي بَيَّنَ الْحَقِّ If other than him clarifies the truth. So it's not you but it's somebody other than you clarifies the haqq. فَيَرَى And then the person starts to feel أَنْ نَعْتِرَافَهُ بِذَلِكَ الْحَقِّ يَكُونُ اعْتِرَافًا لِذَلِكَ الْمُبَيِّنِ So the individual who is not the one who clarified the truth is the other one who clarified the truth. He, the, this one starts to see that if he recognizes the truth and agrees with him on the truth, he's giving this one virtue and he's praising him and he's giving him a status and saying that he's accurate. That's going to be big in the eyes of the people. Pay attention to this. This is the underlying reason why many people have shown enmity to the da'wah of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. Hasad. Because they were about, they were there. They were teaching the people. And they've never mentioned these issues. The tawheed that he called to, the sunnah in which he brought the people back to. They weren't doing that. But he came and he clarified everything. So they are scared that if they agree with Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, and they acknowledge that this is right that he is doing, that by default he's going to receive from that virtue and status. And that he's going to be a person who then the general mass are going to listen to. And then he goes on to say in وَإِنَّكَ لَتَجِدُ مِنَ الْمُنْتَسِبِينَ إِلَى الْعِلْمِ مَنْ يَحْرِسُ عَلَى تَخْطِئَةِ غَيْرِهِ مِنَ الْعُلَمَاءِ وَلَوْ بِالْبَاطِلِ That the jealousy becomes so much so that he said you find some people who attribute to themselves knowledge. So they say we're people of knowledge. He will strive to bring out mistakes from this person of knowledge, even if it's false. He'll try to look for mistakes. He will just watch the video so he can find mistakes. The reason why he's doing all of that is what? The reason why he's doing that is hasad he has for him. He just wants this person to be dropped. Look what the author says, hasadan minhu lahum. Jealousy and envy that he has in his heart towards this person. He wants to drop his reputation and his status in the eyes of the people. That's all he wants. He wants this person to be destroyed and have no name and no recognition amongst the people. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. This is exactly, if you look at many people, when they criticize a person and they speak against a person and you say, what's the issue that you have against them? You can see right through it that it's nothing except al hasad and then you have jealousy towards that person. He will say he didn't pronounce the ra properly. Or he didn't pronounce the seen properly. He said it like a sad. Naam. So he doesn't even know the makharij. So knowledge shouldn't be taken from him. وَمَنْ ذَا الَّذِي تُرْضَى سَجَايَاهُ كُلُّهَا كَفَ الْمَرْءِ نُبْلًا أَن تُعَدَّ مَعَيِبُ Who is the person who is free from mistakes? Is there anyone in the face of this earth who is infallible from mistakes today? There isn't. 
But what is honourable and respectful and, and, and amazing that you've just sat down here and you've only told me five mistakes from a person who's been doing da'wah for the last 30, um, uh, 10 years or five years or four years or three years and you just brought out this mistake. That just really shows me that this person is powerful, mashallah, amazing. Because you bringing out mistakes from a person is just proving to me that the Qur'an is just divine, Allahu Akbar. And that the sunnah is protected. And that contradiction only doesn't happen in the Qur'an and the sunnah. And you're just proving more to me that this person is a human being and not an angel. Are you with me, brothers? And of course, that mistake depends. It's, it's very important that we understand that. It's not every mistake that we look at it like that. But you're bringing me mistakes that are minor. Mistakes that are minor. So many people, the reason why they don't want to accept the truth and they don't want to adhere to the truth is because if they do, they're going to have to give reputation to this person and recognition. So he will never ever say that. And he will never accept it. Hasad. Listen to this story, I mean this uh, hadith, which uh, Ibn Al-Qayyim brings in his Miftahu Dari Sa'ada, Ibn Hisham brings in his Sirah, and many scholars bring it about. Is Al-Miswar ibn Makhrama. Miswar ibn Makhrama is the nephew of Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl is his maternal uncle. Abu Jahl is his what? His maternal uncle. So he goes to his uncle one day and he says to him, هَلْ كُنْتُمْ تَتَّهِمُونَ مُحَمَّدًا بِالْكَذِبِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَقُولَ مَقَالَتَهُ الَّتِي قَالَهَا Nabiullahi Muhammad. Did you guys ever suspect and assume to yourselves and think to yourselves that he was a liar before he claimed the statement or before he said what he had said? Before Nabi Allah Muhammad said what he said, meaning claiming prophecy, did he, was he a person who was known to lie? Abu Jahal, la'anahu Allah, may Allah's consistent and continuous curse be upon him. He said, Yabna akhi, my nephew. Wallahi laqad kana Muhammadan fina wa huwa shabun. Muhammad was when Muhammad was amongst us as a young boy. He was amongst us. Yud al Amin, he was called the trustworthy one, the truthful one. Ma jarrabna alayhi kadiman. We have never known him to be a person who lies. Qattun whatsoever. Falamma khattahu shaybu. Now that age has touched him, lam yakul yakdib ala Allah, he would not be one who would lie about Allah. Now that he's grown old and age has touched him, alayhi salatu wasalam, he is not one that's going to lie. He didn't lie when he was a young boy. It's from the biggest enemy that the Prophet had at that time, Abu Jahl. But look what he gave his reason. He said, Ya So then Miswal ibn Muhammad said, Ya Khal, uncle. Falima la tattabi'una hu. Why don't you follow him then? قَالَ يَا ابْنَ أَخِي مَا نَفْيُ تَنَازَعْنَا نَحْنُ وَبَنُ هَاشِمْ Us and Banu Hashim have a history, my, my nephew, my nephew, my son. Us and Banu Hashim, we have a history. We have a history when it came to competing with reputation. We've always been known to be the two people to compete one another. فَأَطْعَمُوا وَأَطْعَمْنَا They have come, they feed the poor and the needy, we did the same. Then they went and they gave water to those who were in need of it to quench their thirst. We did the same. Competing. They gave shelter. We also did the same. We gave shelter to those who were in need of it. And we were like two horses that were racing and no one was beating no one. Then they popped out and said to us, Minna Nabiyun amongst us is a prophet. They came with this statement that Minna Nabiyun, a prophet, has come out from us. How can we reach this now? So, why is it that Abu Jahl does not want to accept this, my beloved brothers and sisters? Why is it that he doesn't want to take on the Messenger والسلام, prophecy? What is his reason? The reason is merely hasad, hate, hasad for the Messenger. He knows the Prophet is not lying. He knows what he's saying is the truth. There's no way about that. But hasad minhu lahu sallallahu alayhi wa It was jealousy and envy that was in his heart towards the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. And now all he did was, and he spent the rest of his life, was to do what? 
muhawalati li hatti manzilati he sallallahu alayhi wasallam inda nas he all he strove to and all the efforts that he put to was what is to get the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam's reputation and put it down just to belittle him alayhi salatu wasallam and for no one to respect him salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi 